Greetings folks. We're here in Pompano Beach, Florida today and we're going to take you on a walkthrough of Blue Moon. Blue Moon is a 2008 Krogan Express 52 dressed in gorgeous, uh, very distinctive San Mateo wheat. She's a one owner boat and we're fortunate to have the owner, uh, the original owner, Steve, here today to uh, help us do this walkthrough. So let's, uh, let's walk this way and we'll uh, jump right on the boat. You'll notice that, that we're on fixed docks today at, at, the, at, at Steve's home and so we can't take advantage of the terrific uh, full depth boarding gates but it's an easy step onto the cap rail or we can, uh, we can board at a forward location too. There's another gate forward that, uh, that, that would work under this circumstance. But, but today we're just going to step on the cap rail and climb in and, and get the show rolling. Steve, uh, what can you tell us about the, about the cockpit? Let's start here and uh, at, at, the, at the boarding end of the boat. Well, as you can see, we got boarding gates on each side. We got a boarding gate on the rear. And then uh, it's got a lot of room in here and a lot of shade from the overhang. And uh, also we have uh, music in the back here. We've got speakers on the, uh, uh, on the uh, ceiling. In, uh, in 2008, when we built this boat, those, uh, that, the stereo back here was not standard, so that's an upgrade that uh, Steve or somebody made along the way to make sure that uh, it's just nice to have. You can see the decks are in great shape, as, as Steve said. Um, the, 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 it's very spacious back here. We've got over 100 square feet. Wonderful storage below in the lazarette, and there's no equipment down there, so that's all storage. What do you, for fenders, lines, uh, folding bikes, what else do you keep down there? Cleaning stuff? Cleaning, cleaning stuff, and then uh, some of the uh, uh, covers that go down in through there. Uh, cap rail covers cap rail and covers, screens like and, and lots, lots and lots of room. All the, all the room you should need, right? Got more room than I want. <laughs> lots of place to lose things. Exactly, and I've done that. Very easy to handle lines back here with the, you want to point to the, the hawse. Got a, a, a very heavy duty hawse on both the transom and on the side of the boat as well, depending on uh, your, your, your dock situation as you, as you motor. Did and, you show them then, the transom we, shower? And we got the, sh the shower right here. Hot and cold. Hot and uh, cold for shower. Get to your swim platform back here. We also have a uh, camera on the rear so that we're backing up. We can uh, see if we're going to run into a piling or something at the dock. Um, and, that, uh, and, and that feeds the chart plotters, right? So the, the image for the camera is on the chart plotters? All right, that goes for the chart plotters in the, in the pilot house and also up in the, uh, on the fly bridge. Very good. Uh, also want to point out, Steve, if you want to get away from the camera for a second here, um, the standard uh, this is the, the standard electricity on the boat is a, is a single 50 amp service. This is hooked to a 75 foot uh, shore power cord. The cable master is with a, with a wireless remote, of course. Cable TV and phone. Everybody needs that. I'm, how many times have you used that? Ever? Ever. Never. Okay. But it's there just in case. Uh, you got standard uh, 110 AC outlets. A dockside uh, city water inlet, and then that's a freshwater washdown. These are vents for the bilge areas as well. I think that about gets. Well, then you have also the uh, uh, lights on the, for the cabin at nighttime to, for the, on the stairs, so you can turn them on, so you can see. And then you have a lot of lights in the in the uh, in the overhead, in the overhead as well for, for there, so you have a lot of light back here at night. Uh, I'll also point out that we have direct access, of course, to the side decks from both sides. It's two steps up and one more forward, so three steps gets you all the way to the to the to the uh, to the bow. And and the the boarding or the rails, as you can see, are, are are very high, very comfortable. It's a very easy boat for line handling and and accessing both fore and aft, and again on both sides of the boat. Well, let's head on into the salon and uh, and and show these folks what what's uh, inside. What do you that say we do like that? Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. Well, come on, Bob. Let's come on inside here, and uh, got nice wide doors to get through here. There's even enough room for you there, Steve. Yeah, exactly. And both of us, both together, of us almost. together, almost. <laughs> so, so I do want to point out the doors specifically. These are uh, weather tight doors. They're they're ship's quality doors that actually dog down. And since we have the air conditioning on, we'll go ahead and and close it back up. They're wonderful for letting the 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 outside air in and getting good ventilation when. Uh, when the situation calls for it. But here in South Florida, nice to have the air conditioning. 
Uh, you want to talk about the chairs over here while I get some lights on? The, cha the chairs are really comfortable and uh, the, uh, they're almost like my lazy boy that they, they relax and you slide back and put your hands up and away you go and <laughs> say, good, say good night. There you go. Good night, Bob. These are, uh, these are of course, uh, stressless chairs from Eckerness, and um, they're, as you can see, see they're in, in terrific shape. Behind the chairs are, is, uh, is under deck storage sliders. Got a great bookshelf uh, uh, in this corner as well. That's, uh, he's got, Steve's got chart books and other things. Storage in the, below the bookshelf as well. Um, the windows on a Krogan Express are, uh, are, are a little bit unique today in that they open. Uh, a little bit unusual to find that uh, the windows open. These do slide open, so again, more ventilation when you're in a situation where you, uh, where you want that, which is often for us. Um, over here we have a nice L settee and, uh, and, and, a, and a cherry high-low table that comes up. The leaves fold out, so you can put probably six people for dinner if you want to. Yeah, exactly. And then the other thing about it is, is that you've got a lot of storage underneath the uh, settee there. You can open up, uh, i got drawers over here, and the whole thing has got cabinets that we can put things in. I keep a lot of charts in the, uh, underneath the chairs where I'm going for um, the loop. Uh, and then we have the, t the TV mounted, mounted in here. And the, the TV is, uh, the TV can be sealed off if you don't want to like the looks of it. Or if you want to be watching it while you're underway. Got a, uh, a, a Bose uh, sound surround sound Correct. system in here as well, which is, which is nice. Um, and uh, not only, as Steve mentioned, do you have the under, under settee storage here, but there's access to the side deck as well. Very easy access to under the side deck area for, for plumbing and electrical runs or, um, or stowing somebody away that, uh, d that you don't want anybody to know about, for example. One of the things that's nice about these chairs is we have a serving tray that will come around. And this is really nice to set your drinks on when you're just you come in from the, the ocean or something like that. And you're in the marina and want to sit down and relax. If you need a table, you got one. You got there. one there. All right. And do you have uh, a second footstool? I see one sitting here. Is there a second one in the guest stateroom, maybe? Yes, we have, we have two, uh, two uh, footstools for each chair. And uh, Man, it doesn't get any better than... Uh, it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> Very good. And then uh, if you want to stretch out a little bit, there's plenty of room on the settee to stretch out. And take a little nap. In, in fact, uh, we've we've often used that settee for even for for sleeping. We pull the pull the the back cushions off. There's plenty of room for um, for even someone my length to uh, to hang out there. So Correct. get a good night's sleep. All right, uh, let's let's go into the galley and do a do a little tour of the galley. But obviously, one of the the highlights of the layout is the fact that we have the galley part of the salon. It's a galley up, and it's part of the action here. So when uh, when you're preparing meals there you're still part of the activity here in the salon so so that's a highlight the other the other yeah th this is really really convenient because if you're making dinner or just serving drinks you got your guests sitting down at the tables or the, in the chairs you make it right here you got your refrigerator the full full-size refrigerator to go with it and then we have an ice maker right here and grab your ice and away you go nice uline ice maker and, and above is, uh, whether that's a bookcase or a bar, you're using it a little more for a bar. I see it's uh, fairly well stocked, Steve. Very well stocked, and uh, since we've been to Cuba with this boat, we always got some Cuban rum. There you go, gotta have that. Uh, what's down below, uh, below that? This is just some more storage for, we keep some, some wine glasses down through here and uh, some of our seltzer bottles in there. Libations or, uh, or, or, or glasses, either way. Either way. Very good, wonderful. Okay, well let's, uh, let's step into the galley and uh, we'll, we'll do the tour of the rest of the galley here. Uh, welcome to the galley now. The galley has a lot of cabinetry up here. We can store all of our cans and stuff up in the top here and they're easy to reach. Uh, my wife is only five foot 10, or I'm sorry, four foot 10. <laughs> And uh, we have a little stool that she's able to reach up and get to the stuff. And then, <clears throat> then we have the uh, places around on the side here to keep all our, a lot of our dishes, all of our, all of our silverware here. 
And of course we have a full size refrigerator and, and a, a freezer in here. That's a 14 foot uh, GE. It's, uh, it runs, it's a 110 refrigerator that runs off the inverter. Correct. And then back in the, in the kind of the corner here we have a, a microwave which we use pretty exclusively. And then you have a storage place for some of your uh, condiments and your uh, spices. Another little cubby hole for whatever you want to put in there. Toasters, for example. Yeah, toasters. And then you have a lot of, a lot of room in the uh, uh, drawers over here again for different things for the silverware, for the cooking utensils. It's like a half a dozen drawers over there. And you have pots and pans that we can keep down in the bottom drawer. And then we have, a, of course, we have a, an oven in here. So this is all propane. Um, it's a here. Force 10 uh, three burner range, uh, which is uh, which is what, frankly, we prefer. Why why turn the generator on to heat a can of soup, for example? Ex exactly. The uh, propane locker is up top under the Flybridge settee. We'll see that later, and uh, frankly, have, lasts quite a long time. Have a good safety feature in here that uh, will monitor if we got a propane leak or something like that. It'll automatically shut off the the propane so we don't have a a serious problem and then we have the controls for the uh, air conditioning over here too because we're, all, we're also getting air conditioning uh, be blown, blown into here get a breeze along with the controls over there on the other side of the boat for the uh, salon. There's actually Steve an air handler right on both sides so this one is specifically for the air handler Correct. over here that, that controls the air on this side and then the other one over on the other side. Also would point out the uh, the very classic round port light in here which uh, which does open and it's great for ventilating the uh, the galley but it's also a, 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 a consistent with the style of the boat that uh, you've got that round port light which just accentuates the overall traditional design of the of the Krogan Express. Which, which work really good if you're cooking here and you want to vent things out uh, it, you just open that up and away it goes. Pretty, pr pretty good to have that for it, sure. It's really a nice feature. Steve, can you show us, uh, I think that's a, a great overview of the galley, can you show us the, uh, the main electrical panel here? I know that was, uh, when, when you bought the boat, that was uh, a, a real selling point for you. Correct, <clears throat> Correct. because uh, being around all the equipment that I've used to own and stuff like that, I'm very mechanically inclined, and so I was very impressed with the way the, uh, they've done the uh, electrical system. Everything is number lettered, and so you know where everything's at. And just a minute, let me get this unscrewed here. Some, somebody cranked that down pretty hard the last time. Yeah, it must have been me. <laughs> Steve, Steve uh, owned a paving business uh, and, and also um, is a pilot, so he's, he is definitely quite mechanically inclined. This is one of the things that really impressed me with the, the Krogan Express is the way everything is done in here. Neat, neat and orderly, and if you need to follow the line, it's all numbered and lettered uh, if you got a problem. We've never had any problems on this boat, so I can't say that uh, we've had to use it. Uh, on the electrical side, just minor things as the light bulb or something like that. But other than getting back in here ourselves, never had to do it. No, no electrical issues. No. You had a, had a component or two that you've had to replace. You've gotten familiar with a, a bilge area or two along the way, but, right. uh, but the boat is very, very serviceable, and, and uh, Steve has done a lot of that himself. But, but not the electrical system. It's doing... Uh, it's doing what it's designed for. Exactly, so. that's the idea. And then it's all hooked up for the either shore power or the gen set. Uh, you know, you got your DC side and, and you got your, your uh, uh, 110 side. The selector and switch there, the, the, the knob there, uh, you'll notice it has shore, two different shore locations. We'll see earlier where there's a forward, a secondary inlet for the, for the shore power. Uh, so you can switch between both of those inlets and also the generator. Yeah, so if I wanted to sh take the power off the bow of the boat, I can switch it back here. Or if I want to go on the stern, that's where it's at. So it's, it's very convenient. Very good. Well, let's head up to the pilot house and uh, s check out the nerve center of the boat. All right, let's go. So the pilot house is just a couple steps up from the galley. And here we are. And uh, uh, I, I'm thinking, Steve, this is probably your second favorite place to operate the boat from. But it's, but it's a pretty important place in a... A, a nice uh, spot to have. Yeah, well, my, my favorite place is being up on the flybridge, getting that nice cool breeze at you and getting a little bit of salt spray on you and that's that's really nice. But when you're starting to get into some rain and some, some pretty good waves coming out of there, 
uh, it's time to get down inside here and, and run it. And as you can see, we got everything to, to play with. We got all the, all the chart plotters that we need here. You got a lot of, a lot of visibility on the whole boat. Uh, so it's just not losing anything by coming down here other than the fact that we're losing the sun and uh, the fresh air. But well, as we say, if it's too hot, too cold, or too wet, uh, or, or maybe too windy, we, we might be down here. But uh, when we can be up top, we are. Most time we're, we're on top, yes. So, so uh, this boat has a Garmin electronics package that, uh, that the, I, I didn't say earlier, this boat was actually built as a show boat. It was uh, John and Betsy, the, the owners of Krogan Express, it was their boat. Uh, they, they sort of set it up for them and we used it for a, a season or so in the, in the show circuit before you bought the boat. But uh, I think also the, the Garmin electronics package is something that uh, attracted you to the boat. You're, you're kind of a Garmin guy, right? Yeah, the, uh, my, my airplanes have Garmin in them, and to, to me Garmin is uh, very intuitive. And when I saw that this boat had the Garmin in it, that was also a big selling point uh, that it had the Garmins in it, because I understand their, their logic and how they think. And it's worked out really good. We have you know, the, the, the full thing as a Garmin autopilot, uh, plot, plot, chart plotters. I mean, everything is Garmin, AIS. So, so the package itself, is, the chart plotters are, are original to the boat, so they're a little more than 10 years old at this point, but frankly, you don't find any shortcomings. The, it's all touch screen and, and the software is terrific, and uh, other than the, uh, you did replace the autopilot, so that's, uh, that's, an, that's upgraded just a few years ago, correct? Right, that's when, then when Garmin came out with the, uh, the, the autopilot, <clears throat> this boat came with a Simrad autopilot, and when Garmin came out with the, the, their autopilot, it replaced it, just so that everything's talking to everything. It and makes it integrate a little bit better. Correct. You'll notice that to, to the, maybe point to the other little chart plotter there. So, so that chart plotter is a, a full chart plotter. We use it primarily as a secondary display. It's a, it's a multifunction display, and uh, you can see you can get speed and, and depth and heading there. But uh, mostly it's there, frankly, having equipped the boat ourselves, it's there to be a, a secondary depth display. So we have two transducers on the boat, and one of the transducers, the more powerful one, feeds the chart plotters. The secondary display, uh, the secondary transducer feeds that, and it's just there to make sure you have some redundancy. Uh, and, and as well, it's frankly, it, it makes for, the, the boat actually has six chart plotters. It's a backup. Not likely you'll ever need it for a chart plotter, but uh, but it's there if you do. That, what about uh, what about up top here, Steve? Well, that, back to the chart plotters a little bit. There is a lot of a lot of redundancy on this boat, which is a, which is awesome because uh, being a pilot flying airplanes, I like redundancies. And uh, the other redundancy is I like the fact that it's got two engines, big engines in it, so that makes a good redundancy. There are uh, they're 480 Yanmars, uh, and we didn't talk about that earlier. They're 480 Yanmars, six-cylinder turbo diesels, and they've got what about 1,800 hours about, on them? About 1,800 hours on them, and we have never had a problem with them. Uh, we've done the maintenance on them, service them regularly, and uh, these things will just keep on running. They really sound good. They're fully serviced and ready to go. With uh, you, you, you've basically completed the thousand-hour service a little bit early here, so reality is that they should be good for another thousand hours till the next. Correct, they should be good for until you get to 3,000 hours on them. Very good, wonderful. So, so up, on the, up on the top here, we, 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 uh, we changed the uh, radio in there, we put a new fusion uh, radio in there and that will give us speakers throughout the whole boat uh, and, and controlling that fusion from any place on the boat. Uh, then you have your VHF and then you have your your, you have your engine controls and engine monitor stuff and then also then you have the um, your com control for your stabilizer stabi stabilizer control so it has ABT track hydraulic fin stabilizers and, and there's your control there for it for enabling and diagnose diagnostics and so on so everything's easy to easy to get to right here at the uh, at the helm and uh, then also down in the yeah the your control for your wipers you have all your controls for your, your bilge pumps over here that can be set for automatic or manual. Bow and stern thruster, uh, side power bow and stern thrusters, and uh, a searchlight as well, an ACR searchlight. Um, your trim tabs, windlass, your um, AC control as well, and, um, and your uh, 
intermittent control for your Exalto wipers. I would also point out while we're looking at it, the, the helm wheel is, is really a work of art. The, uh, it's, a, it's all cherry wood and, and again the, the factory does a fabulous job with that wheel. It's a, it's a centerpiece as well as the stid chair that uh, about the best chair you can buy for a, for a helm is uh, and, and, and that chair looks like it's hardly been sit in. She's in, she's in beautiful shape. I don't think we pointed out the chart drawers over there too which are nice kind of a dying uh, dying thing but I see you're uh, you're well equipped with your charts and your chart books and I and you were about to talk about the Northern Lights genset control there too yeah so if you want to want to fire up your genset you're right here at the helm <clears throat> you can start that up you get all your all your gauges for the for the genset uh, how many hours on the genset uh, I don't recall there is 567 hours right now and, and again it's a 12 kilowatt Northern Lights Let's move over to the, uh, to the settee here, and, and we want to point out a few things here. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's nice and elevated, which makes it a, a proper, we, I like to refer to it as a proper watch berth. Some people question whether there's enough height here, but I'm super tall in the, in the torso, and, and, and as you can see, I can sit here just fine. And the visibility forward, frankly, is almost as good as sitting at the helm chair. Sometimes when we're out in, uh, in, in reasonably open water, we can bring the, auto, the, the autopilot remote back here and, and run the boat with the remote because, uh, you know, frankly, the visibility is not bad at all. It's also long enough to, to take a nap on and to stretch out and it slides out, the table will drop down and, and the, and the uh, settee slides out and, and makes a double berth. So uh, a little more sleepability here. Yeah, we've actually had a, a, uh, another couple stay with us and we dropped the, the uh, table down and, and slid it out and made a, made a nice bed for them and, and they were very comfortable in here. And uh, when I'm running the boat down here, Judy's spot is right here on this corner. So she can sit there, she can look at the chart plotters and look outside and see what's going on. And if she doesn't like it, she'll yell at me. <laughs> she says, is she a backseat driver sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, note the half haul model, that's a signature of the Krogan Express as well. And, and not only is it a nice conversation piece, but it's useful now to kind of point out the design features of the boat a little bit, what it looks like underwater. So starting off with the beautiful plum stem, uh, which is we, the, the the boat itself takes its inspiration from the commuter motor yachts of the 20s and that plum stem is certainly a signature piece of that but that's more than just a styling feature it also cuts through the water very nice the boat has such a distinctive look going through the water that we constantly get compliments for for how she looks in that regard the plum stem also makes the water line length longer so you get a, a higher hull speed and it helps carry the beam of the boat very far forward. When we're down in the master later, you'll appreciate that, that the high bow and the plum stem and the, and the, the uh, wide girth forward really makes for, for good, uh, good space below decks. Um, the, there's a very full keel that provides protection to the props and gives some stability. And the flat sections and hard shines aft are what give the boat the, uh, the higher speed capabilities. So this boat will run all day at 16 plus and, and Steve does utilize that capability. But the full displacement form forward gives you terrific efficiency and, and operation at slower speeds too. So she's a wonderful eight, nine, nine and a half knot boat. Hull speed's nine, six, but uh, 20 plus top speed and you can run all day at what, 16, 17. Yeah, and that's what I, that's what I normally do. Is I'm, uh, yeah, I like the speed, and the, it's, it's very comfortable that's at 16 knots. The other thing that we forgot to point out is we got electrical outlets all over the inside of the boat here for you want to plug in uh, whatever power you want, which is very convenient for this day and age for the iPads and, and what have you. Charging the cell phone and the iPads and the uh, and the video cameras too, for that matter, when they need it. Exactly. So. <laughs> Yeah, we, we did not short on, uh, on, on electrical outlets. Lots of storage underneath the uh, berth as well. And I, I love little things like the, the storage under the step. And, and my favorite drawer over there in the corner, that could have just been a, uh, a, a blanked out place there, but there was little space. And so the yard puts a nice uh, drawer there for paint brushes or decks of cards or who knows, maybe your drumsticks or something. But at any rate, it's a, it's a nice little place to stash some more things. 
I, I, I think uh, I think that about covers it here. Should we uh, head up to the flybridge and? Well, the other thing, the other thing I want to point out is uh, I missed something. Is you can you can point up the uh, you got a hatch right here if you want to get a little fresh air uh, in there as you're running along, and say you don't have the air conditioners running, you don't have the gen set running, but you want just a little bit of air coming in. You can open, open your hatch up and away you go. We did miss the Dutch doors here oh, too. Yes, we got to open the. Uh, why don't you open that top door and. And uh, so that's, that's a, a wonderful feature on the boat that everybody just loves. If you've got uh, dogs or kids or a little bit of spray, you can open just the top uh, and, and the, the bottom will keep some spray out or, or keep kids or dogs in. So those Dutch doors are a, are a terrific feature. And again, you'll note the, the ship's quality, the, yacht, the, the true yacht quality of those doors with the dogs and so on. They're a, a terrific weather tight door. Something we forgot to talk about too, is the electrical panel in here for for getting the boat started up? We can't forget that. It's a uh, it's real simple to start everything, get everything to start up, and <clears throat> just turn your turn your switches on. Uh, like right now, you can turn your engine switches on. You know, and then you're ready to, ready to go. So so basically, the 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 point to to note is that. This is the navigation communications panel or navcom panel. The house panel we looked at earlier and looked behind is, is kind of the, the, the house operations, the at the dock operations. This is your, uh, these are your underway items. And, and you should also point out <coughs> what you got sitting there on one of Steve's favorite toys on the boat is, uh, is his yacht controller. Now I, I single hand this boat because uh, my wife is not capable of doing any of that. And so a boat of this size is very easy to run with the, with the yacht controller and the way things are set up. I can control the, the bow thrusters, I can control both engines, I can control the stern thruster, and I can drop the anchor if I wanted to right from here. So the so. windlass is wired in, which is optional, and you've gone ahead and you, you, you've had that you know, as part of your system. So that's terrific, frankly, for anchoring, because one person can be up on the bow. You can nudge forward, nudge aft, move the bow sideways, and uh, it's terrific for dropping or, or retrieving your anchor. I mean, there's, there's times that I stand on the dock there, and maybe I wanted to get the boat a little, a little closer to the dock to get my wife on, and uh, I can just give, her, give it a little nudge in the the thrusters and get it close and away we go. And, and, and you, you're, you're out there on the side deck to see what you're doing and to, to be able to give her a hand yourself getting right. on board. Right. Fantastic. Okay, well we probably forgot a couple of things. There's a lot to talk about here in the pilot house, but I say we head up top and uh, see what, uh, head, head for our favorite spot to run the boat from. Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. So it's just a few steps up from the pilot house to the flybridge. And frankly, we love the inside access uh, versus having to go out and around or climb a ladder. Very easy to get up to the flybridge to, to transition or, or to get back down, frankly, or to, to have someone pass up food or drink. So it, uh, it's a, a terrific access to, to the flybridge. You want to tell us what we have here, Steve? It's pretty much uh, a, a repeat of what we had down below. Yeah, everything, everything kind of a duplicate except that we have just one chart plotter up here instead of the two. But we, all, we actually have two chart plotters with the, the smaller unit in here as a redundancy. Uh, but then you got the main, main chart plotter, you got your engine controls, there's your shutdowns for the engines, your uh, balance turn thrusters, your uh, track stabilization uh, pad, you got your radio, you can do it up and down. So this is a zone volume control and you can change stations and so on so you can run the stereo from up here which is nice. And then it can hail whoever you want to talk to. Got to have that. You've got another control, I think maybe you mentioned it for the, uh, for the searchlight as well up here. And uh, some nice MB quartz speakers, compass on the center line, uh, a nice uh, destroyer type uh, helm wheel and um, and another stid chair, again, all right here uh, on the on the center line of the boat. Um, I, I think that's newly upholstered too. That uh, stid chair, is it not? It is. How about that? Fresh upholstery and a nice L set T up here. And again, you can get the decks. Look at the shape of the decks up here. They look uh, just about like new. So let's head back to the boat deck, and we can talk a little bit about uh, what we have back there. And uh, if you want to head that way, we'll we'll do that. So, so we call this the boat deck because it's uh, to access the other boat that comes with, with the boat. 
and uh, we don't have the dink uncovered here. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll show a picture on the screen, but this is a, uh, an 11 foot Nautica DLX. It's a console tender with four seats, uh, seats right. four, okay. and it's got a 40 horse, 40 horse, 40 horse uh, Yamaha hanging off the back. So uh, it's quite a, quite a tender, very much an, a, a state of the art, top of the line tender in its day. Um, we've got a uh, steel head crane here that, that, that is uh, a full uh, four function uh, with a wireless remote that, that rotates and lifts and lofts and extends. And, um, and then you've got a, a grill over here, uh, a propane grill. Uh, I didn't mention earlier that we've got the propane locker under the settee over there so that, that grill accesses the same, uh, the same propane. The, um, the mast will drop down this one uh, does not have a power arrangement. Uh, later we did add the, a power arrangement, but what do we have to the top on this boat, 22? 22, well, 21, 21 and a few odd inches, I forgot what it was. A little more than 21 with the mast up. If you drop the mast down, frankly, if you need to, you can get under a bridge as low as 15 feet, comfortably without a lot of effort, a 17 foot bridge. So she's terrific for the loop. Steve's gonna, Steve, I think, wants to walk you through what he's done with these extra rail parts. This has a, a custom railing arrangement that Steve made. Yeah, Steve what, I, what I did with this boat, uh, since we kind of keep the boat here at our house at the, in Pompano, uh, a lot of times we'll take and go out uh, on the intercoastal for an evening cruise and a dinner cruise with a bunch of people. And so I'll take the dinghy and I'll set it off onto the dock. And then uh, I take these, the railings that I made up and I can en encase all of the, all of the, do do the deck and make a nice like, set of table and chairs up here and we have a lot of open space up in here and then when we're traveling or something like that i keep the rail, extra railing right here tied down and then if you need to you know take the dinghy off again and set it back up again it's as a um the railing is a uh so it, it, a slide in and slide out, uh, stanch, stanch, stanchions. You've got stanchions that allows it to, to easily install and remove. And the same thing with the chocks. For the, the, you can take the chocks off for the uh, make this deck completely clear. Yeah, I think it's uh, probably 11 feet or so from the settee to the, uh, to the aft end of that railing. So you've got uh, quite a lot of room up here when you do right. that for entertaining. Now one of the things that I do on, on the master uh, and I've let it let the mast down. I also use the, the davit to uh, hook onto this and lower it with the davit. Okay. Uh, and it takes a little bit of skill, but it, it's it's doable. I, I would say that for most people, it's probably a two-person job to drop that. There's a, there's just a single pin that comes out. It's it's it, what's nice about the design of the mast is it's uh, biased forward. The weight is biased forward, so you can pull that pin out. It's not trying to come down. It's actually trying to stay, stay up. up. So uh, you don't have to be concerned about it, and then you can grab the mast and bring it down on your shoulder. Uh, for most people, it's a two-person job. Um, Steve and I can probably handle it our, on, our, on our own, but I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that for most. There again, there again you have the electrical outlets on here. Uh, right now we've got it plugged into the, uh, to the outlet for a charger going to the dink so that we have the battery charged, so the battery's always charged up. And we've got other electrical outlets up on the uh, uh, flight no bridge. shortage of, uh, of outlets no, no shortage of outlets all right let's uh, let's head down and uh, have a look at the accommodation see where we're going to sleep tonight it's just a few easy steps from the pilot house down to the accommodations area and down here you'll find two staterooms and two heads the guest stateroom over here to starboard and, and behind you the master stateroom to port here is the master is the guest head I'm sorry or day head the two heads are frankly very similar. We'll look at the other one later. Nice molded uh, fiberglass shower that's plenty big even for somebody my size with a glass door, vacuum flush head and Corian counters and uh, plenty of storage in there for all your, um, all your bathroom equipment. Behind me is the uh, walk-in engine room and we'll look at that in a little bit. The, the nerve center or the heart of the boat really, you'll, you'll appreciate that very much when you see it. And behind these doors is the stacked washer dryer. That's a GE washer dryer. The important thing is to, to know is that the dryer is vented and it's, it's obviously separate. It's not a combo and it does a terrific job both washing and drying clothes. Little storage for laundry supplies up there. To turn, the, turn it over now to Steve and he's going to walk you through the uh, guest stateroom real quick. 
Hey guys, this, this is a, the guest stateroom, or you can make this as your office or whatever you want. The, uh, you have a nice desk over here that you can put things on, a printer, uh, your laptop and everything else. And if you got your children, your grandchildren or something with you, if you've got a uh, Bowman berth that will come down and they can go to sleep up there. I can tell you, Steve, believe it or not, I've slept on that Pullman, so it's it's pretty close to full size, but a little better for kids probably. And, and it's out enough for you to get on there. <laughs> And then the, the settee also makes into pulls out and makes into a bed, and you have a lot of storage underneath the the settee here, and then you also have a lot of storage. Uh, nice hanging locker nice there. Nice hanging locker in here, and then you also have access to the uh, air conditioners and in, in the in what we call the pump room on the boat. Uh, we replace the the salon uh, air compress the air air conditioner and the uh, master the master state uh, master con air conditioner so two of the systems so are basically new yeah two of the systems are new uh, repla replace the uh, fresh water system uh, and everything is uh, functional so it, it's all in great shape uh, ready for the ready for her next owner exactly <laughs> uh, that that set t by the way steve mentioned that it pulls out it does make a double so it, it's pretty wide uh, uh, when you open it all the way up so while, while our, our owners love the flexible space here of the den arrangement, most of the time it's just the two of them cruising and rather than have this be dedicated office space or, or, or a dedicated bedroom that, that isn't used for much but storage, it actually is a, a, a nice usable spot for extended time on the water. And here's our other footstool for the other chair that we had in the salon. And I use, I use that as a chair for when I'm back here doing some paperwork. We found it. How about that? Let's head into the master uh, stateroom and see how that looks. So forward is our is our master stateroom, and the highlight of the master is a centerline queen. It's a standard queen sized mattress. We'll show you in a second, but uh, we do have another ensuite head as well, and you can see the shower is almost identical to the other one. The arrangement in here is just a little bit different, but a, a very similar sink, mirror, and storage as well as another vacuum flush head uh, down below there. We'll rotate the camera around here and Steve can kind of walk us through the rest of the stateroom here and including, uh, again, the standard queen size berth, which is, which is great because you don't have to buy custom linens for this bed. And if you don't like the mattress, just go buy another queen mattress and you're good to go. Exactly. Exactly. Then there's, there's lots of storage in here. You've got everything in storage. You've got a his and hers drawers in there, uh, which we use in the same it's thing. It's a dresser, really, with some shelf storage here, which is awful nice. And the same thing under the bed. There's a huge storage underneath the bed. Six big drawers. And the bed lifts up, so you've got even more storage uh, under the bed. The bed lifts up hydraulically, so it's easy to access. It's got a power strut on it that, that just raises right up very easy. Nice hanging locker over there. And that's very wide. The, this other door is a half door, but the, the depth of it goes all the way to the uh, back end of that door. And one of the things that we did in this in, the, in this room is we installed a TV. Uh, I'm kind of one of these people that have to have some some white noise at night to go to sleep, so I put that back in here. And uh, we're able to control the ch we changed the uh, uh, satellite receiver, and so we can we, we can able to change our channels back here if somebody wants to watch a different channel in the in the salon. Is uh, this uh, Direct TV or Dish on this one? This is Direct TV. Direct TV is set up. You you could probably switch it to Dish if you wanted, but Direct TV is the is the simpler choice, and the boat's ready to go. Note as well the headroom in here. Uh, frankly, it's a it's over seven feet in the uh, in in the tallest spots. Four port lights and a big hatch up top makes it feel nice and light and airy. And the other thing we talked about how the boat carries its its girth well forward. You can put your knee up on that pad. Maybe you can show us, Steve. And uh, unlike some other boats that have a forward master where you have to be just about some kind of a gymnast to get the sheets changed, you can actually reach the head of the bed from there and put a sheet on without having to uh, get on top of the bed or slide the mattress around in order to make it, which is really nice. A couple of tables up at the head of the bed as well for, for a, a lamp or a book or something. So the boat's... Uh, Boat's really uh, just just very very comfortable. Uh, and, and, there, for her. and there again, you got out, you got electrical outlets all over the place in in here too. And one of the things that I've done done back in here, I've got a, uh, a radio 
uh, mounted in into here too, so we get some speakers. Um, get your stereo sound yeah, pretty much everywhere, everywhere right? Everywhere, yes. Got to have it. <laughs> All right, very good. Well, you've been waiting a long time to see this engine room. I think we should go down there and uh, show them uh, show them how that looks. I think they'll be impressed. Well, pretty much everybody that comes on a Krogan Express talks about. Uh, how, what an amazing engine room this is, and, and for a boat that's uh, in the 50s, the, the, the ability to stand up and, and get around the engines on both sides, walk right in, is, uh, is really quite impressive. I'm 6'4", and, and you can see I can almost stand up straight in here, so it's, uh, it's really pretty impressive. Um, I'll, I'll turn it over to Steve in just a second here, but these are 1800-hour uh, uh, Yanmar 480s. You can see the engine room all in all is in, uh, is in terrific shape. Steve's done a great job of maintaining it, but the engines themselves are, uh, you know, they tend to run very, very clean and, and, and given the good access, frankly, it's easy to, to take care of it and can keep it maintained. This is real, it's real easy to keep it clean. Uh, just wipe it down and it's, you're, you're done. The, uh, able to be able to walk around on both sides of the engine to service the engines is, is fantastic. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, on this side over here, we've, we've got the... the um, uh, There's a battery over there in the stabilizer box that your correct. foot is on. Right. And then your stabilizer equipment back there on that uh, aft bulkhead. Uh, there you go. Thanks, Anthony, for catching that. So that's the tank for the, the reservoir for the stabilizer, hydraulic oil, and solenoid. Over here, uh, if you can come back to this bulkhead, We've got a fuel transfer pump here, which allows you, with just a flick of the switch here, to move fuel from one side to the other. Of course, uh, two big ray cores for, for both main engines. This, of course, is just for the starboard. And um, the uh, reverso oil change pump behind Steve, if you can uh, move just a little bit out of the way there. The, uh, and that's set up with uh, five uh, lines feeding it, so both engines, both transmissions, and the generator. There's also a uh, freshwater washdown hose there. If you uh, happen to, you need to do a little cleanup in here. You get a little raw water in here or something. You can, uh, you can hose the hose the space down. You can see how nice and clean and shiny and white those floorboards are. Lots of there's some shelf storage and and we saw earlier behind Steve, lots of storage on top of the uh, water tanks. Also, this this speaking of water tanks, uh, you can see the sight class there. Steve's a little a little low on water at the moment. No sense in carrying a lot extra, but those are 185 a side or 370 gallons total of water and the nice simple sight glasses uh, at a glance you can tell how much water you're carrying. You can see the camera back there for the uh, for the engine room. We didn't show that earlier on the chart plotters but that shows up on the chart plotters and uh, a very big uh, 240 volt um, blower or, or, or sucker that brings air in actually and when you turn that on you can exchange the air in here in a hurry. Right Steve? That's right. It'll show cool, cool it down real good. Uh, over here we've got a, 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 a more storage for tools. We've got uh, the C fire system on the uh, fire extinguisher system there as well. And let's get the uh, mixing elbow on the aft end of the engine there. That nice shiny thing. Uh, those are quite new. Just what a hundred hours on them or something, Steve? Yeah, less, they're less than a hundred hours on them. They're uh, poly, stain, <coughs> poly stainless steel. So, uh, so you, again, you're good to go for quite some time uh, on uh, on your mixing elbows. Something that that over time uh, you you might get ten years out of those, and uh, they're going to need to be replaced. That's been done on this boat. So, she, so again, she's she's good to go. If you can uh, duck down, Anthony, and look aft, we'll we'll point out the the, the Northern Lights generator there, and it's it's very serviceable. Frankly, the uh, the front cover, most of the, most everything you need to do is going to be right behind that front panel. The um, impeller is going to be to the panel to, to the right. It's to, to port the way we're looking aft, and you can pull off that end panel. And so all of the services in place or, or the normal maintenance services are, are quite easy. Um, let's let's uh, have a look at, at the aqua drive system on one side there. So the, the big collar there that uh, is uh, that you wouldn't normally see the the genset ray cores are hanging on that that collar. That is a, uh, a an aqua part of the aqua drive system, and the idea is that all the thrust from the propellers is um, is being driven into that collar. 
and so it allows the engines uh, not to have to absorb the thrust associated with the propeller and they can be more softly mounted. Uh, it, it, it keeps uh, noise and vibration, reduce the amount of noise and vibration that's transmitted into the structure and it's probably the best thing you can do on a boat in terms of a basic design feature to keep the boat quiet. Between that, that collar, that thrust collar, and the, uh, and the transmission is an intermediate shaft that Anthony can point to there maybe. And, uh, and on either end of those shafts are CV joints that allow movement between the engine and that, uh, and that collar. Uh, it will absorb, uh, absorb the movement. So again, that's a, it's a terrific system that really helps keep the boat uh, as quiet as she is. Bob, what Bob, did I miss? Well, Bob, one of the things when I, the last haul out that I did on this boat, uh, the boat is, uh, of course, uh, 10 years old, 12 years old, and uh, the uh, I had the shafts pulled and I put new cutlass bearings in it, uh, and we trued up the uh, the propellers, and uh, we we did that just for just uh, general maintenance and just check to make sure everything was up to stuff, and uh, everything was good there, and then we also added the. Uh, <clears throat> oversized alternators on this boat. Uh, the boat normally comes out with 80 amp alternators and we, we replaced that with the 120 amp uh, Balmore uh, alternators with the external regulators which gave us better control of the uh, energy going to the house batteries to build those up. But I didn't like running the, the generator all the time and might use the uh, power off of the engines. The other thing that we did on this boat was we put in sensors on the fuel tanks uh, that we were able to read the uh, how much fuel is in the fuel tanks in the, the, on the chart plotters. Uh, originally when the boat came it, uh, you just had the sight leads to, for, for information. So they've got, the, they've got the same type of sight glasses as the uh, water tanks but, um, but and, and it's by the way 700 gallons of fuel 350 aside those are aluminum tanks um, but, but Steve has done that upgrade. I'll also mention that, that and Steve touched on it, the, uh, the alternators, not only are they putting out uh, substantially more, 50% more total output, but the three-stage regulator is much better for your batteries than the typical standard single-stage regulator that, that, a, that a standard uh, factory alternator comes with. So the, so the charge system really is uh, terrific on this boat. I'm thinking that about wraps it up for the engine room. That about wraps it up for the engine room. We'll, uh, we'll see you outside. I think that's, uh, we'll, we'll hit the bow and uh, check out uh, the anchor situation and call it a wrap. Yep, sounds good. So there's great access to the side decks from both sides uh, fr from the pilot house doors. I want to point out a couple of things here before we head up to the bow. We have spring cleats, two of them on both sides and they're up in the tow rail. They're not where you can kick them or hit them with your ankle. They're also so easy to use. We don't have covered side decks, and what that means is we don't have superstructure as we're trying to manage a line carrying it forward. It's just as easy as it gets in terms of, uh, again, handling uh, lines and docking and so on. As we walk forward, I want to point out a couple other things. I mentioned earlier at the beginning of our conversation here, this additional boarding gate here. The, the tide's coming up high enough now that we're actually above the dock. Usually this is uh, more even, but the point is you've got a, another boarding location forward that, uh, that, that's also a higher boarding point. Nice extra rail here to hang on to, and I mentioned earlier, this is the other 50, uh, 50 amp shore power inlet and another phone and, uh, and cable TV inlet as well. Note again how high and wide the side decks are. Just very comfortable, very safe, very secure, very easy to, uh, to manage. Let's head forward now and we'll have a look at the, uh, and let Steve talk you through uh, how to anchor this boat and, and what's on the bow pulpit. Well, here we got the anchor there. We got the anchor controls up and down right here. They put, put pedals. You probably don't use those very often, though. You're usually using your yacht controller. I do. I don't use these. <laughs> I don't use these. But often. they're there if you need them. I don't use these at all. Then you got the locker for the chain and stuff like that that's in there. Nice big, uh, again, ship quality Freeman hatch, and and that. That compartment is big enough that, that, that I spend some time there on occasion. I don't prefer it, but nice ladder to get down there. Room for some, uh, 
for, for uh, fenders and lines if you want to. Yeah, Steve's got his uh, wash down hose down there. And it's also compartmented. There's a, a divider down the center line. So if you decided down the road you wanted to add a second anchor, it, there's, there, you can keep your ground tackle separated. You'll notice that, the, that Steve's primary anchor here is mounted to one side and that allows room on the starboard side for a second one should you decide to add it. So we have a combination chain and, and uh, road anchor. And uh, did you uh, did you modify that from standard, or is this the no, way? It's a standard. So it should be 50 feet of chain and, and 200 feet of line. So 250 feet is kind of our standard. So right. that's what this boat has. Nice Maxwell uh, Liberty um, windlass there that that does a great job. Uh, notice the the chocks for the lines coming through and the and the chocks on the decks there. Uh, very easy to again to access the lines to drop the lines in and tie the boat off as well or release it. And then you also have the wa wash downs. I don't know if you point that. I or did not, not. But you've got the salt water wash down on one side, and you got the fresh water wash down on the other side. I'm thinking maybe fresh is over here and salt water over there. I forgot which one. I think I think it's that way. And and the concept there was a little easier when you're at least for right-handed people to have the raw water hose over there and reach over that side and 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 keep the keep the uh, keep it clean so yeah, but so see, I'm left-handed so we didn't do this boat for you originally obviously but uh, <laughs> I think that's how it's set up of course you've got your uh, your your burgee on the center line there as well and uh, mandatory Krogan Express burgee of course um, before we wrap up here I do want to point out uh, if you if you look aft Anthony the 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 low profile nature of the layout the, the flybridge really sits down behind the pilot house and it, it, it's part of the signature, the traditional styling of the boat, but, but for a pilot house boat it, it's, it's a relatively low profile boat. Again, you can get under a 15 foot bridge if you drop that, uh, that bimini and, and so uh, it, it's again a terrific, terrific feature. If you'll, uh, if you'll come this way one more time, Anthony. I, I think I think we're done up here. We we pretty well captured the bow, and and uh, we've been through the entire boat. So, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time for hanging in with us and and watching our video here. There's lots more information on the website at kroganexpress.com. I'm Bob Loudon. I'm with Steve, the owner of this boat. If you're uh, if you're interested, give me a call at 404-786-4514, or send me an email at bob at kroganexpress.com. And of course, we're open 24-7 at kroganexpress.com. Look forward to talking to you soon. Have a terrific day.